good morning and good evening and good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Noah. I'm a strategic account manager here at Evident. And today I'm joined by none other than Sebastian Lanner, who is a CAD CAM engineer and technical specialist at Lithos. He's an expert in digital manufacturing and additive manufacturing applications in the medical and dental field. But enough of me talking about you, Sebastian. Why don't you um, tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Thank you, Noah, and thank you for having me here today. So yeah, my name is Sebastian. Um, I'm working at Litos. So I started as a CADCOM engineer by training, and I did my apprenticeship at W and H Dental Work. Most of dentists know them, or as well for laboratory equipment. So I worked there for five years um, as a CADCOM engineer. And after that, I uh, went to Vienna and did my first experience in 3D printing, worked for a startup as application engineer, learned a lot of different um, printing technologies and materials, um, mainly focused on polymers. And since more than a year right now, I'm working for Litas um, as an expert um, on working mostly giving lectures and giving lectures for new customers, for example, and I'm involved in a lot of projects regarding dental, for example, um, cranium, facial maxilla area, and microsurgery. Yeah, and I know Lithos has been in the um, aerospace and medical field for a long time, and it's a really well-known mm -hmm. brand and company there, but um, to the dental space, it's a bit new. So why don't you tell the audience tuning in, you know, what is Lithos? What do you guys focus on? What do you Yeah, guys so on that point, I'm gonna share my presentation to give you a few pictures of Lithos. Yeah. And one second, so I'm gonna share it in here. And before we forget, the uh, topic for today's webinar to everyone tuning in is um, how to elevate your lab with next-gen tech featuring 3D printed lithium disilicate. Hopefully you know what we're talking about if you're tuning in and watching the webinar, but I'll let you take it away, Sebastian. Perfect, so you see my screen right now? Yep. Perfect, okay, so yeah, um, welcome to Litas. Um, yeah, I've prepared the slide over here. Uh -huh. And this slide is basically just an overview as we talked about space and aerospace. Um, yeah, Litos already had some projects where you already know us from the media maybe. So as we already printed some parts for a biofabrication facility on the ISS, we also had a project with um, the European Space Agency of printing uh, moon dust, for example. And also we printed the arc reactor of Iron Man. So this main component of its suit, but this was a um, from Mythbust Mythbusters, maybe you saw that um, video, but we mainly um, focusing on high performance ceramics. So here you have an overview of all different various, various materials we are able to print. And what I, for us is interesting, the medical applications here in our field. So sorry, actually, I don't know why it's not worked. Okay, so now you see my slide. Yeah. You, you see the overview um, of the different materials we're capable of print to print. And I think most interesting is here the medical um, applications in here, where you see um, from a dental technician, dental side for sure, zirconia is interesting, but also hydroxyapatite and tricalcium phosphate. And what we are focusing today is the lithium disilicate. Um, here an overview about our company. So Litos was founded in 2011 as a spin-off of the Technical University in Vienna. And our um, we offer a full solution of 3D printers, materials, and the software. Um, we, in Vienna, we develop and produce all those components. So we have around um, 150 employees in total on four um, different locations. So two of them in Austria and one in the US, so in state New York, in Troy, and one in China. So we have the quality management system ISO 9001 already, and by next year we'll have the 13485 done, but this is mo mo very important for our first medical product, which will be the lithium disilicate, the 3D print. And we already sold around 150 machines worldwide. 
where around 25% of our customers um, working with two or more machines. So yeah, we think that for Sorry to cut you off, but do you have a 3D printing center as well, or is that mostly for more niche custom solution? Um, our goal is really focus on the development of the printers and the materials. Mm -hmm. And we do not have um, a 3D printing lab, so this is basically up to our customers. We have a, oh, um, okay. a few customers, they provide print, 3D printing service, but our goal is to develop and improve our materials and the hardware, our printers and software. All right. Well, um, um, why don't we dive into how um, lithium disilicate is disrupt, 3D printed lithium disilicate is disrupting the dental industry. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you something about some impressions in here um, of our production facility, just uh, as you've seen it. So we, we work in a clean room environment to produce all the materials and here as well of our printer production, how this looks like basically. And as you said, so why should we print uh, dental restorations? And here um, I create a slide with a, with a few few claims. And what we see with um, lithium disilicate, we surely um, have the highest aesthetics. So the material with the highest aesthetics is lithium disilicate, with um, therefore a very excellent mechanical strength, uh, strength and very easy to characterize. We see that with lithium disilicate, we get the most natural restorations done mm -hmm. and for sure the biocompatibility. Um, and I, one, mm -hmm. I was going to ask, so I know that a lot of people tuning in from the audience are already thinking, how does this, aside from the obvious, you know, being 3D printed, how does this differ from traditional ways of uh, offering lithium disilicate in dentistry? So the main difference is basically the way how do you produce it. So our material, our material in the beginning is different and the way how you process it is different. But in the end, after you went through our manufacturing process, which I will show you later, um, you will have the same lithium disilicate as you already know. So you can same use the same tools for polishing. You can use the same colors for character for characterize your um, restoration. So. Um, after the process, you will have basically the, the same material, the lithium disilicate, um, which I have here small notes. So this is jointly developed with Ivoclar and mm -hmm. together we yeah, developed that product where Ivoclar provides the powder and Litos basically creates um, the printable material and the hardware. So it's two trusted brands coming together to make an amazing product. Um, yeah, so it's together with Ivoclar, we, we developed that product, but in the end, it's a product um, sold by Litos. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So over here, I have a picture um, where I show some 3D printed crowns and maybe also some, some claims of our technology. What we see is big advantages in here is we have no milling tools. You don't have a... Um, um, diameter compensation, which leads you to very high detailed occlusal surfaces and very natural surfaces. And I think one of our biggest advantages we can see here in the next slide is you can print as well ultra thin veneers with our technology. Um, as I mentioned, we do not use any tools in our manufacturing process. Um, so we do not have any mechanical stress. So we can go down to very, very thin ball thicknesses, down to 300 micron. And this um, leads us to a non-invasive dentistry. And I think this should be the goal when we talk about dentistry for aesthetics, because um, for dentists, is nothing is better to um, grind or prepare a healthy tooth for a veneer. So, and... For sure, as well, the productivity with our technology. Mm. So here, a number is around 7.5 minutes per restoration. So this truly always depends what type of uh, restoration you have on the build platform. And, and as, as you see, you can various indications print in one print shop. And uh, are one you print... changing the slides, Sebastian? Ah, sorry. Yeah, I'm changing the yeah. slides. Actually, I'm not oh, sure why. The okay. ultra thing. There you go. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. No, no um, yeah, so on the left side, you see uh, our build platform. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah, so here we have around 7.5 minutes per restoration. The duration of a print job is around three to four hours, always depending on the highest um, restoration on the build platform. And for sure, the tool is protection and the high material efficiency. So we can use really up to 90% of our material for the restoration. So we do not generate any dust in there. And and what, what I yeah. actually like about it is, um, sorry, this is going down on a tangent, but mm -hmm. I like how there's minimal disruption to a um, lab's existing workflow. You know, if you're familiar yeah. with mill work, if you're familiar with 3D printing, it's not like you have a crazy um, post print process. It's very within the lines and it's within well the lines within mm -hmm. the tools they already work so as i yeah. said the material is the same so here i have as well a comparison between the two technologies the lcm mm -hmm. our printing technology and milling where we see the, the utilization of the material is here at around 90 percent and in milling we are around 20 percent and what is mm -hmm. also very interesting is the difference between so the parallel um production we have in our um process so up to 50 restoration in one um, print job is generated parallel as you have in milling one at a time when you um, yeah mill or grind um, lithium disilicate mm -hmm. so as well we are dust free and a very easy material change so we later will, I will in the next slides I'm going to show you the process you will see how the material is incorporated and this is basically very easy to change and start a print job and yeah, for sure yeah. the, the veneers in, in the last point. So you can print so very different indication with lithium disilicate just on one machine without any um, problems. Yeah, for me, it's the uh, material utilization. I mean, mm -hmm. um, especially in a lab environment, um, it doesn't matter how good at nesting you are with a puck, you're gonna end up wasting uh, X amount of material, um, especially yes. when it comes to milling. Um, one of the main benefits of additive manufacturing is really that you're already only creating the restoration. You're not cutting it out of something. So there's inherently less material and um, less resources wasted. Yeah, that's totally a very important point. And so we see that the printing technologies is yeah, a very good yeah, technology to prog prog progress on that. So now let me show you how a process actually works our LCM dental process. So this and is just... Sorry, yeah. Sebastian. Uh, no problem. I completely forgot about all the questions we're getting in. So Calvin Song from Creodent. Hey, Calvin. Mm -hmm. Is asking um, how many units you get per build plate. And I believe you're saying it's approximately 50? Yeah, it always depends. As we see, um, when you use a lab, if you go printing of veneers, they are much smaller. Um, and so you can put like up to 50 maybe 60 is always depending on that okay. and if you're going like only for molars and then we see like 25 to 30 so yeah very yeah, different uh, parts so it is hard to say to have here a specific number mm -hmm. and then what is the estimated um, print time and the duration of the post-processing uh we'll dive into the entire workflow um in the upcoming mm -hmm. slides so we'll save that one for later um yeah and then um calvin was also asking what is the waste percent versus milling um i believe you had that in the slide it's about 90 percent yeah um, we had that in the slide so this is mm -hmm. yeah so utilization we're around by 90 percent. so and we see um with milling it's around 20 percent. so this was is kind of number that we yeah, investigated to do different um, questionnaires so and yeah, so this is around the number that we can use. So 90% of the, mm -hmm. so the only material you lose, you lose basically. So after you print shop, there's still sticks some material on the surface and that you need to clean. And this is basically the material you lose um, during the uh, print process as well, the support structure. That's inherent with any 3D printing process though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um Maddie is asking, can I use your material in my DLP printer? Um, I'll let you answer that one, Sebastian. Um, so that's not possible. So later we're gonna, I'm gonna explain a little bit of the, something about the material, um, but yeah, I can tell this right now, it's very a highly viscous mass. And so it's 
for yeah, common 3D DLP or SLA print is not possible to process this material. So we have some mm -hmm. um, technical features in our machine to make this possible, basically. So yeah, it's on that side, it's not possible to use a different printer. Mm -hmm. And then we also have, we're getting actually a lot of questions about the overall yeah. workflow. I think the audience is excited. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, let's dive into it. Let's I'll dive into it. Yeah. The, the, the workflow, how it basically works. And so, um, so yeah, the process changed for you. It's just an overview. Um, as we work with the CAD design, we send it to the 3D printer. Then we have the thermal post-processing in our case, debinding and sintering. And then we have the post-production. Uh, post-processing, um, for example, um, remove support, staining, glazing, and so on. Um, so let's get more detailed to the CAT design. So yeah, we start with 3D scan. I think this is very familiar. And with an integral scan, the next step is design. So for sure, you can use the common softwares like um, ExoCut or 3Shape to generate your um, design. And after that, you export your file and create a support structure on your restoration. So this is a little bit different if you compare it to milling. I think you have more like um, less but thicker connection points. We have more and very thin connection points. So this is for us important, important for the print process and so at so this supports are more in line with 3d printing than they are with milling supports. yeah okay that's exactly this this is the point so we, have, we try to we develop here to get the perfect size of these pinpoints mm -hmm. that you afterwards have to, you remove the support you easily only have to like have finish it on the surface and then the restoration is done and yeah, so here, this is a different process and would say at that time, the most critical to align and um, yeah, choose the surface where you want to put on the support. support. Mm -hmm. And then this um, is kind of getting into the, <coughs> but, uh, uh, you're talking specifically about how nesting and selecting the way you put the supports is different yeah. from what you would normally do for 3D printed? Yeah. And um, for 3D printing, it's very uh, similar to 3D printing, mm -hmm. so it's, but it's different to milling, for example. Oh, uh, sorry. I uh, so, misunderstood yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's basically, yeah, not integrated there... in ExoCut at that mm -hmm. point. So we use here different software. It's Desk Artist right now that we use to create this um, support structure. Okay. But we're developing here to make this step um, as easy as possible for the dental technician, because this is a very important step. Mm -hmm. and so there's a separate uh, CAM software that uh, labs will have to use? Yeah, at, at okay. this development stage, yes, it is um, a different software. And yeah, so okay. and the next step is basically the nesting. This is, again, a very easy step. So you have... You, did your um, support structure and then you only need to put it in our um, slicing software, basically the software which op what operates the machine and yeah, put them on the, on the surface. So very easy step and send it to the printer basically. And after you send it to the printer, so here's a small explanation what basically happens. It's a, again, very same um, as you have it in a DLP or SLA printing mm -hmm. process. So we have our uh, build platform, our file or our model, and then we slice it into images. And each image is used and projected on our VET. And then we use blue light to um, polymerize, polymer to, for polymerization um, of each layer. Gotcha. And so basically our part is created. So in this step, we create the shape with polymerization. So in this um, printing step, we do not have a full dense ceramic part. Um, we have a composite part. And mm -hmm. this leads me to the next slide um, to our slurry. So basically the material we use, we call it a slurry. And it's a mixture of ceramic powder on the one hand and as well a photo curable binder. Yeah, and, and the this ceramic mixture, powder is made by Ivoclar. It's made by Ivoclar, yeah. For the lithium awesome. disilicate for that project is made by Ivoclar. And as we have a very um, amount of powder mm -hmm. and as less binder as possible, so the, the mass is highly viscose. Maybe you see it on the left picture where yeah. the material gets into the vat. 
And so a lot of, um, yeah, so it's not possible for common printers to process this material. Mm -hmm. um, in the next slide, I'm going to show you a small video how our printer is built up, how it looks like. And you basically see that our web is, uh, is around and we have this white blade, it's called Viper blade. You see in the, in the, in the left picture, and this blade coats a very thin layer of ceramic. And then we dip in with the build platform and the polymerization of the layer starts to create the final part. Um, but let me show you the video and then you have, I think, um, a better overview how this printing process works. Yeah. So you see here basically the machine, how our machine looks like, and then you see the, here the, the printing area where we have here on the top our build platform, the white one is here the Viper plate and the round vet is mm -hmm. um, where the material is incorporated. So here is um, one of our biggest advantages that we only have around 10 grams of our material that needs to be inside that vet. So when you um, yeah, stop a print shop, so basically you don't lose any material because you can use basically everything what's in that vet, except of a few grams. Mm -hmm. And this viper blade coats, as you see here, you see this rotation movement of the vet and the viper blade, which coats a very thin layers. You see here our dosing system, which yeah, pinpoint precise dosing during the print shop. And this is basically how it looks like when we coat the layer, we dive through our slurry and get on the bottom, basically into the heart of the machine, where we see our, our um, projection system and optical system. And here you see basically how it works. We project here one slice, one image of the 3D part on the bottom of the vet. And due to that blue light, um, a polymerization starts in our material and you see the screen running? One second, sorry. I'm so sorry for that. Mm -hmm. oh, no worries. Interesting. And do you have, uh, um, uh, I guess? Go. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll wait till we finish the video and then I'll ask the question. Mm -hmm. So here we are. Yeah, we have here the, okay, I'm so, I don't know why it does work, but yeah. Okay, and here we see the polymerization of that layer and how we create a 3D printed part afterwards. And that's basically all. This is how our printer works. Okay, well, thanks for the video. Out of curiosity, do you have multiple, I guess, size machines or is it just kind of one standard size of one standard? Um, this is a video, as you see on the parts, that is created for the industrial sector and yeah. for the industry, we have different um, sizes of the build platform and mm -hmm. um, of the projection systems which we see for the medical, especially for the dental field, there is only one machine. This is the S65, um, is, which mm -hmm. is interesting for the dental field. So the others is more for the industrial area. Yeah. Gotcha. So for dental applications, there's only one size printer at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is basically how our printing looks like. So um, after this printing, we have the cleaning, as I mentioned before, is on the surface. Um, there is still stick some material, and after these cleaning steps, we go to the debinding and sintering. And I think we're uh, oh, there we go. The slide just changed. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And here we have this is a little bit different to milling, as we have two steps in here. One is debinding and one sintering. And I like to explain it on the left picture in here. So this is a, a yeah a part basically printed out from our CEO, Dr. Johannes Homer. And on the left side, you see the part basically directly after printing and cleaning. And you see mm -hmm. also see an image of the particles. We have in the particles, the yellow, the ceramic particles, and as well as some polymer particles. These polymer particles helped us basically to shape the part. And now in the debinding process, we want to get rid of them. Basically, we burn them out. So we mm -hmm. use heat. Um, to burn out all the polymer, and then we get to the um, part in the middle where you see only the ceramic particles without any polymer. But um, we have a very, very low density in here. And so we have the last step, the sintering. And in this step, the sintering and crystallization in the um, lithium disilicate 
takes place and we create the dense and uh, strong part in here. Very cool. So instead of, um, you know, in a normal 3D printing process where you would do mm -hmm. the typical alcohol wash, you're just doing the debinding, which is essentially yep. just using heat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we and have then you go to center. Th yeah, that's true. So we have mm -hmm. for sure we have a cleaning step in between where we have our own developed solvents to make this cleaning um, as, as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. And then this debinding basically helps us to, yeah, get rid of all the polymer inside the pipe. So we burn out. And after the sintering process, we have basically the full ceramic. So here we are having no composite anymore. So this is the lithium disilicate after this step, as you know, basically from pressing or milling. And in terms of time, I guess, what does, yeah. what's the total time for the post-print process? So after so, fabrication. As we're still in the development process of mm -hmm. this um, product, um, this time amount of the debinding process is one of the uh, most critical steps in here. So okay. but what we know as a time is here that the printing process is around three to four hours and the sintering process is as much as you know um, from um, lithium disilicate um, mm -hmm. from pressing, for example. The debinding step is something that we at this time um, don't have an exact amount of time right now. Yeah, you're so, still gathering data on it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we're still gathering data on that. Yeah. Cool. And, and then, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Have you any question regarding the debinding sintering? Um, yeah, if anyone, oh, I have a question from mm -hmm. Calvin over at Creo. He's asking, mm -hmm. what is the thermal shrinkage from the sintering? Um, the sintering, so in the full process, we are around 30%. So again, so this is not a number that's very specific right now. So we are mm -hmm. around 30% as in the development process. We, in the end, try to get as much um, ceramic in our slurry as possible to get the shrinkage as minimum as possible. But so we see at the moment it's around 30%. Okay. And he's asking, is that factored in the CAD software? Um, yes, so this is in our slicing software. So basically that comes with the machine where we do the nesting in the end. Um, here we have basically the, the, the shrinkage for the part prepared. So here we only select the material, in that case, a lithium disilicate, and then the, the factor is basically the part is prepared in that factor. Okay. And then uh, we have a couple questions about the material specifically. So why don't we finish mm -hmm. going through the workflow and then we can talk a little bit more about the material. Yeah, so it's two more steps. So I just want to mm -hmm. show the removal of the support structure. Um, here, the laboratory tools, not any specific something, as you know, for the ceramic after our center process is the same. So you can work with the material, as you know, you have really the same feeling on it. And as well as and uh, staining and glazing in here, so you can use the same colors as you used before to create basically the, the natural and final result. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's so far on the um, yeah process. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of um, we're actually getting a bunch of questions come in. Mm -hmm. um, Moj is asking, what is the shade and variety of the material available? Will the materials be coming in different shades or is it mm -hmm. one standard? And then when we, uh, so the first, so we, our goal is to get the materials as, as soon as possible to the market. Mm -hmm. And so we see that we're going to start um, with medium translucency and the most common shades. So this will be A1, A2, and B1. Okay. And yeah. then um, Arnold is asking, do we have a video that shows the entire process starting from preparation for the 3D printing? You know, if there's any calibration for the 3D printer. Um, we preparing something so that we have a video. Mm -hmm. So it's in the finalized um, yeah. step right now. Um, you can always reach out to me. Do you have my email? So as mm -hmm. soon as I have the video, um, we will give it on YouTube and I'll send you the link to the video where we dive you to the full process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, starting from preparation, exocut, sending to the machine to see basically the dental workflow video it's called and for sure we're going to send out this. So I think it takes some time, I think a few weeks till we have it done. And 
at this point, we have two parts. The video has two parts. In the first part, we explain um, the integration basically of ExoCut, um, how you can prepare your restoration. The second part is focused on the printing and one part of the sintering. And I think later um, this year, we're going to prepare a video where we talk about um, the sintering and post processing of the part. Gotcha. And um, just so uh, the everyone has your email, um, I'd like the marketing team to drop Sebastian's email in the general chat. Um, mm -hmm. If you do have any questions that aren't covered in this webinar, please feel free to email Sebastian. We'll also have a poll at the end um, for those of you who are interested in learning more about the technology and we'll share your email directly with Sebastian. Um, so stay tuned. We're uh, still getting a bunch of questions coming in about yeah. the material and workflow. Um, mm -hmm. Maddie is asking, or Patrick is asking, what is the MTA strength versus traditional process lithium disilicate? And again, Maddie sorry. is asking, uh, what is the MTA strength versus traditionally processed lithium disilicate? Are we talking and, the strength of the material? Uh, yeah, the strength of the material. It, yeah, so here, so for sure, we still, um, the FDA approval is still pending. And so we couldn't get any values Give you any value on that but here as well here is we our goal is to get the same strengths as you know from um mm -hmm. ips emx press okay and yes that ties perfectly in line with the next question which um maddie is asking we know million lithium disilicate is substantially weaker than pressed lithium disilicate mm -hmm. so what's the strength of this material compared to pressed and i think you kind of answered that already yeah so um, this is the goal that we get here the same strengths as mm -hmm. um yeah ips mix press gotcha and um edwin is asking do you center on the ivoclar s1 or do you need to use a um, lithos machine to center um the print process the post processing so um as I mentioned, we have two steps, the debinding and the sintering and sintering and crystallization. And in the debinding, we have two furnaces in here. So we have one debinding furnace. And there's these are not from, from um lithos. So these are basically um the debinding furnace is provided by Navaterm. So it's mm -hmm. a company in the industry and the ceramic industry, um, very common, it's a German company. And the sintering and crystallization process, there you can use a program from IvoCloud, for example. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, another attendee is asking, do we need debinding um, sintering under vacuum furnace? Um, um, or debinding under vacuum mm -hmm. and max temp is 920. Um, the debinding is in a much lower temperature mm -hmm. and don't need any vacuum so okay. you only need the vacuum in the sintering crystallization process so for example in program app from ivoclar yeah mm -hmm. and calvin is asking um what is the sintering time um sintering time i need to look up on that i think for sure numbers is very difficult on that to say yeah. um it's i think uh, in a range of one to three hours for sure. So this is also okay. as well something we um yeah need to evaluate and yeah find out okay. the perfect time to get um yeah to don't get any bending in the material basically. So this is one of the um yeah most critical things in here. And as I mentioned before, um that we print with support structures and these very fine connection points um helps us a lot to avoid here the bending and have a very precise part in the end. Okay. And uh, Moj is asking, um, are there specific stains and glazes that you need to use or is it open to user preference? Um, you can use the preference. So if you work with lithium disilicate, um, especially with Ivoclar, um, you can use the same um, yeah, stains and glaze you already used. So because after our Debinding and sintering process, we have a lithium disilicate, as you know it from Ivoca, and it's the same process in staining and glazing. So, so. okay. And uh, I know we, we still have lots in the presentation, so 
Um, I'll mm -hmm. let you continue going, Sebastian, but I do encourage the audience to know as you have questions, just continue to drop them. Yeah. Um, and we'll so, try to address them all by the end. For sure. So yeah, for sure. I think we have some time in the, in the end to answer all the questions. Um, what I've prepared for the next slide is uh, it's here some some dental res results in here. So these are basically some veneers um, by dental technician Josef Schweiger from the LMU in Munich. So he's, he's I would say, a friend of Lita. So we work very close with him in this development process. He's a, um, a very, very extremely good uh, dental technician and helps us a lot to get to know more in the world of dental technicians. And so he printed some very fine veneers in here where we can see we yeah, partly can go a, a bit thinner than those 300 microns. And yeah, so it's his article um, that he wrote about our, the process, how it works, how the processing works from his perspective. And yeah, so here's, here's the try-in with, we call it the ultra thin veneers he printed. So if as well, if you're interested on the article, just reach out to me, um, send you that one. And for sure, I have a quote in here that he's also really, yeah, really likes to work with our technology. So as as, as he sees with the 3D printing of lithium disilicate, we really, this very high attention to detail, precise fit and straightforward workflow. And, Another um, result I want to show you here is done by the dental technician Avaro Ruperto, and he showed us with one of our restorations, we sent him um, a, a cutback technique, so he prepared it basically um, for a cutback and showed us here this, I would, I would say, very beautiful result in here. And another... Um, Result in here is um, as well the diastema closure. Um, here we have a paper made together with the Charité in Berlin. So for sure, please reach out to me if you need any more information on that. So where we just want to showcase this diastema closure, um, where it's very important to get very thin um, edges. And this would, well, looked very, very well on that. And as well, a very impressive um, try-in in here is um, as well in the same paper with the Charité in, oh. in Berlin. And here we have the incisors and the canines were printed with our, te uh, with our technology, um, were through processed and characterized. And then here, um, yeah, took a picture in that try-in. And this was um, done by Dr. Alexey Mkowski. And yeah, as well, a quote from him. And she's as well impressed about the aesthetics of our technology and the fit. And so um, in the next slide, so what's in for you, I have prepared a, yeah, a small, I would say a business case in three slides to visualize basically the advantages of our technology. When you see um, here compared to milling, we when we take a block of lithium disilicate with amount of around 7.8 grams, you can go for one indication, one restorations. And the most of it is basically, uh, yeah, you can't use. And if you use the same amount of material and go, for example, one of those ultra, ultra thin um, veneers, you can go up to five veneers with just that amount of, of material. And so, yeah, this allows us that we use almost every material that's in the vet. And what you see here again is um, the shaping time comparison on the left side um, in minutes as we have in printing the, the parallel production with up to 50 restorations. And when you go milling with that silicate, you have just one after one. And so this leads us that we can get much, much faster in our printing process. And when we take a look at the costs of the consumables, um, in our process, you've um, the only consumables is basically the cleaning solvent. And on your bed, you have a, a sheet, um, a transparent sheet, which needs to be changed one, maximum two times if you have like mass production um, per month. And compared to milling, where you have the very expensive tools, for example. And so, and yeah, so here we see a lot more costs that you save with 3D printing. And 
In the next slide, this is as well just a, an overview um, about the production costs of um, one restoration over uh, of numbers. And here we see that we are around at around 5,000 restorations. Um, here we have our, our point where we mark and we are cheaper than milling. So here you see, we see this is basically also the message that we, this with this technology, reach out to bigger labs who can won't go with a lot of amount of restorations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think something important to note with this graph too is um, yeah. it's a bit, it, that's in line with what you'd see for most major equipment purchases for a large lab. Right. Yeah, anything from yeah. like a uh, even with a traditional 3D printer, uh, spec especially yeah. one that's production oriented, you would see the same type of yeah. graph. Um, and when and, oh, oh, go ahead, sorry. And when we talk about the investment, so it's basically mm -hmm. the graphic is on the left side that high, so we are around um, five hundred thousand um, dollars investment for the whole equipment to start printing, and this is basically why the first up to the first thousand restorations you're um, more expensive than milling, but after that you go down and then you reduce costs up to fifty percent on your daily business, and this I think is a very impressive number. Yeah, exactly. So the main benefits of adopting this, or well, there are a lot, but if you could boil it down, it'd really be saving time. Um, yeah and saving material and saving yeah. cost that's yeah that's the main points for sure and the possibility to use a lot of indications for example a big molar and a very fine thin veneer on the same build platform in the same print shop on the same technology interesting yeah and i was going to ask so we've been talking a lot about you know um how you're saving time you're saving cost it's a lot mm -hmm. more efficient um, you know, you save more material. But I was wondering, what are some of the limitations of 3D printed lithium disilicate? I mean, the technology sounds cool, it looks amazing, um, but surely there have to be some current limitations. So, any yeah, drawbacks so that you could talk about? The, the biggest limitation I would say right now is that it's not available on the market at this point. So, yeah. um, that's, I would say, the biggest limitation. And maybe as we see here in the business case, um, the high volume of production that a dental mm. lab needs um, yeah. to yeah afford our technology, and yeah as well the initial cost. I would that would I would say to do the biggest drawbacks in that. But if you're a, a dental lab um, who produces that amount of restorations and um, really want to see how easy it is to um, manufacture lithium disilicate, I think mm. that is the best way. To and, go um, I was uh, also out of curiosity, I was wondering, um, are there any concerns about the solubility of 3D printed lithium disilicate? I know uh, resin material solubility mm -hmm. is um, pretty critical since for, yeah. you, know, you don't want the, uh, the restoration yeah. dissolving in the peak as well. Yeah, so it is is always also important for us that we are in the end a full dense ceramic. So we are not a composite, we are not... 30, we are not 50% ceramic. We after printing, we are 100% ceramic, and so here we have basically no no struggles with any solu solubility of the material afterwards. Okay. I'll let you carry on before we dive into yeah. some more questions. About yeah, for sure. I'll, I think I just have one more slide where I show you um, where we are, where we are next, so where you can mm -hmm. see our technology basically. So. I know the very short term, so it's in, in Vienna. So if someone is in Vienna in, in the next two weeks, so we have in an in-house um, AIM Ceramic um, where yeah, we show our technology, where we show our um, machines and as well having some dental specific topics here. So for sure, please re uh, reach out to me if you want more information about that. And for sure, this is the form next in Germany. And I think the biggest and most interesting event for you will be the LMT Lab Day in Chicago, where we are. And what we're planning is also to be a bit earlier in the US and also having, as we have our subsidiary in, in, in Troy, um, yeah, providing something like a workshop. This is something that's really rough in the planning. Um, if we have some interested 
um, yeah, companies here. So please reach out to me. And so we kind of prepared something like this in the, the, month, the weeks before the LMT lab day. Okay. And um, that being said, I'd like to, we'll open up the floor to questions. Mm -hmm. um, just continue to drop them into the audience and uh, we'll try to go through them. Uh, mm -hmm. Maddie is asking, what is the wavelength for the material to be polymerized? Um, our, we use blue light and mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I think it's 450 nanometer wavelength. It's, it's blue light. So yeah. let's keep it here. Yeah. yeah, she was also asking, what is the layer thickness um, of the material? The layer thickness um, of the, the, so the maximum layer thickness on the material is so we what we see in our results um, are between 25 micron and 50 micron. 50 micron still work very well as we have the shrinkage we have with 50 mm -hmm. micron still very very high details and so this is something in between where we need to find the sweet spot um, in terms of printing time and quality. Okay, and um, we're getting questions for, about the color of the slurry. Does that correlate to the shade that um, the material will be in, or is it just kind of? The, the, the color of the slurry is, is, is quite very different. So this color yeah. of the slurry is because of, um, is due to the binder material. The binder mm -hmm. material can be a very different color than the slurry. So um, in our iteration, right now it could be, red or they can be very different colors. So this, the color of the slurry will not be indication of the final product. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, Moj is asking, is the cement material different than milled crowns? Um, the cement is uh, here again. So the process after the printing um, is basically is here the same. So the cement as, as you used as a as a dentist are the same. It's the same process and sediment, sedimentation process is the same as you use with lithium disilicate right now. So there is nothing different. Um, we're getting some interesting questions too. Yeah. Dr. Danny Lowe is saying, I'm a dentist. Where can I mm -hmm. attend a, um, or where can I learn more? Um, we're also getting some questions about um, price of the material and, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I guess testing out the machine. Uh, for those questions, I'd like to ask uh, yeah. to email and coordinate with Sebastian directly. Yeah. Um, so now's actually a good time. We'll get the marketing team to drop that poll. If you are mm -hmm. interested in learning more about the um, the three D print printed lithium disilicate, please contact or please click yes, and we'll share your email directly with Sebastian for uh, him and his team to uh, reach out to you. Um, while we're running that, uh, Maddie yeah. says, not a question, but I wanted to comment on an excellent Zoom meeting and webinar and my commendations to both the host and the speaker. Thank you very much, Maddie. I appreciate your kind words. Thank you very much due to, to the small problems in the beginning, but I think we <laughs> managed it finally. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of bound to happen when you're doing everything digitally. Uh, yeah. um, we, I do have some questions about uh, how labs can get started. Um, I know that besides reaching out to you, um, attending mm -hmm. the upcoming events would be a, a, um, yeah. a, a good next step. Um, but I was also wondering, would you suggest that analogs get started with analog labs get started with this digital workflow if you have a large um, a large analog lab that yeah. can meet the volume? So. I'm honest, I, I haven't seen it on that side with analog. Mm -hmm. So we mostly compare it to milling centers. So I think we should, it would be very interesting to have more information as well from analog. Um, um, yeah, dental um, technicians and dental labs to maybe see if we, if, if it's possible, if it's feasible to use our technology mm -hmm. there. So we're surely open to calculate here something for you. And yeah, so if you're a big, um, analog dental lab just reach out to me and um, yeah we make a meeting and find out if we if we can if, yeah find a solution for you and are you looking for labs to um i guess test and co collaborate with in the u.s 
Yes, for sure. So all the time. So if you if there are any inter if a lab's interested. So for us, it's important the number I show, showed in the last graph. So it's mm -hmm. important. So our target is basically the big labs, and we're still in the development process, which means so as we are as litas, not the um, dental professionals, labs mm -hmm. uh, like you out there um, surely can provide us a lot of important information and you can with that information for sure, um, yeah, get the product to your needs in the end. Yeah, I think that that feedback loop is really important and it's great to see yeah. that you guys are looking for that and, um, you know, really need to collaborate with the industry to further digital dentistry. Um, finally, I was going to ask it, is it too late for labs to get on board with LCM and 3D printed lithium disilicate? So, no. So there is, it's, it's not too late, too late. So yeah. you're, if you're here in, in the webinar, you're, you're perfectly right. So you get basically the first, uh, informations and the most detailed mm -hmm. informations right now. And from here, we start getting, um, this technology, um, out to the, yeah, dental labs. Awesome. And um, before, I know we're nearing the top of the uh, hour mark, um, Sebastian, so I wanted to ask, mm -hmm. you know, um, what do you think are some of the key takeaways from this webinar? You know, what is the most important message that attendees should take away um, from this hour and where can they learn more? So, yeah, so the most important thing is basically that it's possible. So you can print um, lithium disilicate. Um, you need to notice that this technology is, um, yeah, focused on big labs, um, and for sure. So we can print very fine veneers. So non-invasive dentistry is basically, yeah, starting right now. And where you can see us next, I think, if you're in the US, the LMT Lab Day would be the, the perfect, um, yeah, meeting to talk with us, talk with me, talk with my colleagues and yeah see how we can get this technology in your lab yeah for sure i'd like the uh, marketing team just to run a poll before i forget if you're interested mm -hmm. in evident cad designs um we have to plug that as well as if you're interested in getting the ce credit please uh, yeah and our team will send you your ce credit um i was going to say that is only lab day chicago correct that's not um Lab Day West or East? That's um, on this, yeah. So we now have, have mm -hmm. planned for Lab Day Chicago. Um, yeah, if is there if there's something else, then for sure um, we announce that when we go for East or West as well. Okay, perfect. Well, um, I want to say thank you so much for your time, Sebastian. And I appreciate the audience tuning in. Um, to those yes. who are watching, thank you for your time and um, we'll see you next week. I hope everyone has an amazing week. Thank you, Noah. Thank you for everything and thank you, audience. Bye. Bye.